Well, good morning, everybody, and happy Sunday. It's good to not, I can't see you, but I know you're there, and so happy morning to you all. Um, today is going to be a great day. Comment down in the comments. Now, we had a little issue with YouTube, um, but um, I don't know what's going on with that. Me and BJ's got to work that out. They've been blocking our videos for the last month, and so we're, we're, we're trying to figure that out. Either way, we'll get that figured out. But for them, in the meantime, you can let everyone know that I will upload this onto YouTube right after. And so it would just be like you're getting to church late, like a few of you other people I know out there. So anyway, uh, let's go into an old worship set that I uh, pulled out this morning that I think is really a, a good, good time of worship. And I'm looking forward to um, just worshiping together with you this morning. And then we're going to jump right into the Word, okay? I love you guys, and I can't wait to get this Word to you this morning.
And again, I'm sorry that this is happening this morning. Um, but hopefully we've got it worked out now. Let's see if I can get on here and so I can see the comments. Bear with me. Comment if you like. Let me know if you're here. Okay, I see. My hair looks amazing. Well, at least one thing's good this morning. <laughs> Man, have mercy. I miss you guys, and I know that this is a bummer, but I think, too, you know, it may be good for us to kind of sleep in on Sunday and have a little break. I don't know, but we will be back next Sunday um, as long as I don't hear of, hey, it shows Tim for a minute, and then AOC starts talking. <laughs> yeah, I don't no, I don't get that either, Scott. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get that either, but we're going to skip out on pastor tim this morning he was going to do offering and do um do uh, announcements so the announcements are simple we we will skip this wednesday and that will be our 10-day period and um and so we will kick right back into service next sunday just as normal we ask that you take precautions you know we see how easy it can be now um and i, I wanted to react quickly and kind of just cancel down for 10 days so you know, it's some, it didn't really spread or get beyond what we were um, ready for, or what we wanted. Uh, we, you know, we we want to be smart. We don't have to be afraid. I, I talked about that a little bit Wednesday night. If you missed the Bible study, we want to follow the Lord's leading. And so, <clears throat> yeah, it makes you appreciate going to church, doesn't it, Tracy? And so, I just I just want to say, you know, I love you guys and thank y'all for being patient. But I feel like that we have to, you know. We have to make decisions that protect everyone. I know some of you 38, 40, 25 year olds that feel invincible, invincible, but I do have some 80 and some almost 90 year olds in the church, and so we have to be safe, okay? So, with that being said, then other, let's see, is there another announcement? No, nope, I don't think so. Just that we're going to start back regular. We'll be totally back to normal next week. Sunday school, Grand Grand will be upstairs. Jamie will be, uh, I believe, in the fellowship hall is where he's doing theirs and um just be back to normal next week wednesday we will not have church i'll do another online bible study and um tracy said 55 i don't know what that means trace oh you're 55 that's girl you don't look a day over 40 come on now but um the next thing is um pastor tim would want me to do this if you do want to give today you can do so by giving you can do text to tithe um, it's really simple, really easy. You can do the 84321 is the number that you text to. And then you just text your amount in the um, um, in the um, the text, whatever, in the message. And then it just takes you through the steps. And yes, Caitlin, this will be on YouTube. The problem is, is that YouTube has kind of blocked our church videos too for the last month. And me and BJ have been working tirelessly trying to figure that out. Um so what's going to happen is right after this, I'm going to upload everything to YouTube. So it'll just be like you're coming to church late for your dad. Just tell him, let him know, and um, sorry about that, all you YouTubers. So let's get let's get started. Looks like everybody's back. If you would share and comment, I can see the comments down here. Hey Cassidy, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, looks like. Uh, Looks like everybody's here. So let's get started. I, I, I feel like I have felt in the spirit for the cup, cup, past couple of days that, and, I, and I've talked about it several times, that, I, that you know, with everything changing, it feels like there's just like this pressure on us. And, and, it, and, and what happens to us as people is we turn these pressures into silent pressures. Like we don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want to, let me move my phone so I can read my comments without having to look. We don't want to talk about it anymore good morning elaine good to see you too goodness gracious everybody's here thank you lord wayne even wayne darty's here wayne wayne doesn't want me to tell you this um 
but he fell down his steps yesterday because he didn't um he didn't turn the lights on so everybody if you will text wayne today and tell him wayne hey, did you turn the lights on turn the lights on <laughs> and so um but what we do we turn the pressures into silent pressures and to me that's that's like the most the most that's the most that's the biggest struggle is when we just kind of avoid what's going around us or we avoid the life that we're living or we kind of are just numb or blind and we're just kind of going through life have you ever found yourself doing that like where you're just going through the motions going through life and just living every day and what happens with that um, and, and make no mistake about it, Satan is never on vacation. You understand? He is never on vacation. And he is constantly seeking who he can devour. That's the word tells us that. And so this morning, what I want to do is I want to speak directly to some of you. I know not all of you. Yes, Scott, he did go to the doctor because he thought he broke his wrist. You need to hound him for that. This morning, what I want to do is I want to talk directly to you, to the ones who need a breakthrough right now, who you are tired of pushing, you're tired of allowing the world just to just suffocate you. And that's the word that I just felt in the Spirit because that's not the word I was going to use, but the Lord showed me that for some of you, the, the, the world around you is just suffocating you, whether it's your debt crisis, whether it's uh, sickness, whether it's fear, whether it's... Um, relationship, whether it's your home life, whether it's your job, whatever, the devil is doing his best. The world around us, everything around us is doing its best to suffocate you. Pastor Tim has a message that he preaches sometimes about a python and how it slowly squeezes you and squeezes the life out of you. If you sweet talk him, he might preach that message to us one day. But I just, I want you to understand what happens in those moments. See, the Word tells us that the cares of the world choke out the Word. And if we're not real careful with that, the very thing that we're supposed to be standing on, the very thing that is supposed to be our hope and our salvation, what will happen is all the things around us and all the pressures and all the idols and all the, all the, the, um, the, um, what's the word, um, disconnections or distractions, all these things will slowly come in and start choking the word out. And you don't even realize it because what you're looking for in an idol is something that you're worshiping. And what you're looking for in something that's choking you out is, is depression only or, or something that's bad. But what you, need to, what you need to know is in these frustrations, in these, in these life events, in this, in this thing that we live in every day, there are subtle things that come to choke, choke, choke the word out of us and hinder our faith and our and our just our boldness to believe in him and our hope to believe in him and, and just to put us in a place where we can say, Lord, no matter what's going on, no matter that the storm, think about the disciples, the storm going on outside. Jesus was asleep. He comes up, the disciples are freaking out and they're saying, what are we going to do? And Jesus says, peace, because he is not afraid of the storm. Instead, he knows that through him there was peace. Now, the disciples needed to learn that. The disciples needed to learn that in that moment. I find it funny that, um, you know, there's an old song we used to sing in the Church of God years ago that says, I know the master of the wind. I know the maker of the rain. Even when it storms. Da, 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 I know the master of the wind. And it's true. You know, Jesus is the master of the wind. He created the wind, the rain. He created the storms. He is king. Jesus, listen, Jehovah is all-knowing, all-powerful, omnipresent. He's with us at all times. And the problem that arises is when we take our eyes off that, it weakens us into a place that allows the pressures of this world to start tackling in us so i don't want to get off on too much of a tangent but i hope that you're uh, you're hearing me i got to speak to the people who need a breakthrough right now there's some of you you need a breakthrough right now and there's some of you you might need a breakthrough next week 
And then there's some of you that got a breakthrough last week. I encourage you to strengthen those who need a breakthrough now. And so here's what I want to I want to talk to you about how we're going to get our breakthrough. In 1 John 5:21, it says, "Dear dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your heart." Number 1. Keep away from anything that will keep that will take that might. I like how the NLT says that. Keep away from anything that might take God's place in your heart. And so what we have to do is we have to make sure that we are not surrounded with things that could infiltrate our heart in the place of our heart where God belongs. I preached this sermon years ago, uh, or a sermon years ago, when I talked about who has the seat of your heart and how I remember being a kid. My grandfather had a chair, and then you could sit in that chair all day long, but when he came home from work, he didn't say a word, he didn't say anything, he'd just come there and he'd stand there because he expected you to get out of his chair because that was his chair. And that's the same thing with God's chair in our heart, is that that belongs to him, and we can't allow anything or anyone to have that chair, that place in our heart. God has to be the center of our heart. How do we expect to have faith in Him if He is not in our heart and, and, and keeping all the things that would distract us or pull us away out? So what we do, what we do typically is that we um, unknowingly, hear me, we unknowingly set up idols in our life. There is this stigma to idols that says, well, it's something that I have chosen over God. Or it's something, it's football, or it's television, or it's money. It, it, there's this weird stigma that it says it's something that you choose over God. But I think it's something that infiltrates us slowly because that's how Satan works. And we can have idols set up in our life that we didn't really desire, but we find ourselves worshiping them. And, and, and they have our hearts and our minds. Um, and I'll give you a good example of that, and that's debt. Debt. Debt to this world. Debt. Well, Pastor, you can't have anything without debt. Well, that's not entirely true. No, that's not true. But debt is something that accrues slowly, but you needed that mattress. You know, I know I, I change mattresses like every three years. You know, I get it. You needed that new car. You needed you needed um, to go buy you some new clothes, or you needed to go um, overboard for Christmas, or you need, there's always that need. And slowly, and in your mind, in your mind, you think to yourself, well, this is not really, you know, it's just a little, it's a little bit, but over time, that piles up on you, and now that's all you can think about is how I'm going to pay off this debt, how I'm going to get out of debt, and then you start feeling the pressure, and you start feeling the anxiety, and then what happens, and then you have to start working more, then you have to start sacrificing more, now you're not going out and eating, enjoying good mood, uh, good food, now you're having to eat bologna, bologna sandwiches because of this thing that's infiltrated traded your life slowly that you've allowed. Do you see how that works? And that's to me, that's how idling and that's how idols work. It's not something, it's like, I'm not going to go outside. Let me give you a good example. My dad is, he's hilarious. He thinks he's a jokester. But what's happened is, is you know, a couple years ago we played tournaments on Sundays, maybe last year, I don't know, with Shepard, um, baseball tournaments, you know, and so, and then, and then we might have a baseball practice or something on a Sunday. And, and then my dad would call me and say, hey, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm at a baseball practice. And he'll say, son, it's Sunday. And I said, yeah, but, you know, we're, it's afternoon. We're not doing anything. Oh, it's okay. You keep working on to get those rings so you can melt it down and make your idol. <laughs> yeah, but he's being serious. And uh, But that's the truth, though. You know, I, even with something like that, it can take, um, it could take the place slowly, slowly of our heart and what we find in that moment, see, I am not the anchor of my faith. Do you know that? Like, it ain't how good you can faith. 
I am not the anchor of my faith. God is the anchor of my faith. And so if God is not sitting on his place in my heart, if God's place is not in here with me, then my faith will be weakened. My faith can be destroyed. My faith can just find itself where it's just overtaken by the thing that I have allowed to infiltrate my heart. So in John, 1 John 5.21, it says, Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your heart. And then Ezekiel 14 and 4 says, says then this tell them that this is what the sovereign lord says the people of israel have set up idols in their heart and fallen into sin and then they go to a prophet asking for a message so it's like the people know it they know they've allowed these idols to take over they get it they they, they understand it so they go to the prophet and they ask for a message and he says so i the lord will give them the kind of answer their great idolatry deserves and so I'm going to sit here and just and just kind of tell you this. Let me make sure everything's still working here. If you want a breakthrough, if you need a breakthrough in your life, if you need God to break through, I'm telling you, you need to survey what's in your heart. You need to survey the things in your life that has control of you that subtly has had control of you. It could even look like a relationship. You could be codependent on a on a on a spouse or a boyfriend or girlfriend where where their mood can affect how you feel. Or their reactions or their emotions can affect how you feel. And then that becomes, subtly, that becomes the idol of your heart because that's what your heart now is producing, is producing to your mind. And then your mind is just, it's coming out of you, is that when you are so captivated by something in this world and it controls your heart and your mind, then that is all you are producing and this is why it's so important that we have a clean slate that we don't have anything that is controlling our will anything listen to that god give us free will and that's what you know what idols do oh this is a word i hope y'all are still watching this is a word what idols do is take the place of our free will Instead, it places itself in a place of authority that causes us to not have free will, but to obey it. Something to think about. Let me say it again. What an idol does is it sets itself up in a place of authority in your life that takes away your free will and causes you to do as it needs or wishes. That's another way to say it. In other words, the idol becomes our control. And this is why we can't get the breakthrough. You know, some of you might need a breakthrough from um, from a drug addiction. Some of you might need a breakthrough from um, um, sexual sins or adultery. Some of you might need a, a breakthrough from greed or or, um, or it, there's a number of things that you might need to break through. And what's happened is you have allowed these things to subtly take you, that God's place in your heart. And that's why you're not breaking through. And it's the same thing with fear. Let me tell you this. Elaine, I think, just posted. Let me see what she She said, God is in total control. Faith, not fear. That's absolutely right. We should have faith, not fear. But if we've allowed fear to become an idol... How do you do that? Well, you're always focused on the thing that drives the fear. Then now that becomes your idol. That becomes the thing that you have exalted above God. Ooh, this is a word. Man, because if you exalt anything above God, whether it's fear or relationships or money or debt or, or anything that you're needing to break through, um, any of these things, you literally have said they have more authority than God in your life. And it's time for you to come back down and say, no, in the name of Jesus, debt, God is, God has all authority over you. God is, I, let me just say it like this. I'm not going to be a slave to anything anymore. I think there's a song that goes, I'm no longer uh, um, a slave to fear. I'm no longer a slave to debt. I'm no longer a slave to depression. I'm no longer a slave. What that means is that is something that has taken its place and a place of authority over you. 
and it's saying it has control over you and now that isn't what it is is an idol it's not something that we have bowed down and just worshiped because we wanted to it's something that has infiltrated our life that we keep our eyes on instead of god this is a good word i don't know if you're getting this or not but idols doesn't have to be something that we just choose to be our focus it's the things that we allow allow to be our focus so what we have to do is we have to tell this counterfeit yeah Tracy it's it's I think it's birth out of contentment like when we're just complacency you know but what we have to do is we have to pull down now this is the word that I, I was going to show you whatever has your heart is your God what are you exalting to the high place Ephesians 6 and 12 I found this I found this scripture very very interesting Ephesians 6 and 12 says we've wrestled not against flesh and blood uh, but against principalities and against powers and against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness you know I've been reading that scripture for years until I read this last part look at it it says spiritual wickedness in high places now, of course, we understand that there's like this, this spiritual leveling and dominioning. But no, I, I don't think that's what I think this. This is literally talking about the things that we have set in high places. The spiritual wickedness. Now, money's not evil, but the way we've treated money makes it evil. You see what I'm saying? Fear, fear was created by God. I mean, fear is not created by the devil. Don't, 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 don't let nobody in this world. Don't let nobody in this world tell you that fear, God created our bodies. He created the parts of our brain that make fear. Those things are created to keep us safe from danger. But what happens is Satan has utilized different things to pollute that and cause fear to be an idol, to be something that is counterfeit. Think about it. Everything in this world, relationships, they're meant to be sacred and holy between spouses, and, and, and the devil has polluted what a relationship should look like, so it becomes an idol. There's a lot of different things. I'm not going to keep harping on that, but we have lifted whatever we have lifted up to a high place. If you want a breakthrough, whatever it is that you've lifted to a high place that has caused you to be in this pressured top atmosphere, that has caused you to be in this place where you are just, the life is being squeezed out of you, the Word of God is being choked out of you. If you're in that place, it's time that we pull down everything as it set itself up in a high place. And today, you need to take total, and I mean total, 100% authority over whatever it is, and pull it down in the name of Jesus. You call it out. Call it out and say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, debt, you have controlled me long enough. Today, I don't have any desire for you anymore. Get out of my heart, get out of my mind, and God will take his place on his throne. It's as simple as that. Fear you have no place in my life. For God did not give me a spirit of fear, but of love and a sound mind. I can think things through. And I love. I don't have a spirit of fear. So fear, you got to go. And God will take his place on the throne. See, the thing about God is he is a jealous God. And one thing that I've learned about God real quick like is he won't ask nobody to get out of that seat. He, he won't ask anyone or anything. He won't ask fear to get out of his seat. He won't ask um, any type of idol that you have unknowingly maybe created to get out. But he's standing there waiting on you to tell it to get out. And he will take his place on the throne of your heart. The Lord spoke, this is Numbers 33, 50 through 52. The Lord spoke unto Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan near Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, say to them, when you passed over the Jordan and the land of Canaan, that you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land before you and destroy all their pictures, destroy all their images, and quite, and quite pluck, and pluck down all their high places. Now this is important because 
This is God saying, not, you can't just speak to fear. You can't just say, in the name of Jesus, fear come down, and then surround yourself that would induce fear, and it be okay. You can't just say, in the name of Jesus, uh, the, the spirit of, of the love of money and debt, be gone, and then surround yourself with the ability to continue to get more in debt. Uh, this is why cutting credit cards are important, you know? Just got he when Mo, when God told Moses to go in and take that place, he said, "Tell them to destroy all the pictures, all the molten images, and pluck down all the high places." Like we got to get rid of everything if we're gonna take this thing captive. We've got to get rid of everything. We got to start fresh. We got to break through, and if we're gonna break through, then we've got to get rid of everything that used to be. A resemblance of what this place was. And today, I'm telling you, and I hope you're still watching, I hope you're still with me. Today, you got to get rid of every single thing that is a resemblance of what you do not want to be. If you're held captive by fear, if you're held captive by by uh, greed or debt or depression or, or, or you're held captive by any of these things, it's time that you cast them down, but get rid of anything and everything that would cause you to be held captive in a resemblance of what those things are. I don't know if you're getting this or not, but man, this is powerful. It's time that we say enough is enough, and we're going to pull down every single thing that has set itself up against the Word of God. That is in the Word in 2 Corinthians, is to pull down every single thing that sets itself up against the knowledge of God or the Word of God. And we have to do that. So I was thinking as, as I was writing, and it says, um, what have we exalted on the top of our heart? What's at the top of your list? What have you allowed to block you from God? What have you allowed to block you from getting this breakthrough? What, what has it been? And so we have to decide that today. Because I know that some of you, and I know in my heart, there are some of you right now that need a breakthrough. And the only way you're going to get that breakthrough is not say, God, please help me. God, please help me. What he's waiting on is for you to cast down the things that has been exalted over him in your life. Get rid of them. Cast them down and allow him to sit on the throne of your heart again. We have to take authority over the things we have to take authority kathy just wrote the word is enough in the spiritual realm guys that's right we have to take authority over the things in our life we have to speak it we have to believe it you need a breakthrough you need god to take back control let me say this with my final point here when you place anything before God, it becomes this, this shell. Uh, this is I was I was in the shower just before I was getting ready, and I was asking God for an illustration, and this egg kind of popped in my mind, and I don't even know if it's a good enough illustration, but I, I just I really want to share this. Like an egg has this vulnerable, intimate. Oh man. This is good. This is good. I'm following the Lord on this. An egg has this intimate, um, fragile, life-giving state, right? Yes. When it's original, in its original state, it has a shell around it that protects it, and it has the ability of life inside of it. But what happens when it's placed in a boiling part of water is what happens is it starts to affect the insides of it and it changes the insides number one it 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 it, it keeps it from being life-giving anymore and number two it hardens everything that was fragile and and pure on the inside to another state and this is what happens to us in this in this world when we allow the things in this in this world to to just to have our heart to to choke the word out, it places like a shell around us. It places a shell around our heart specifically. 
and then when surrounded by the boiling water we're surrounding uh, uh, we're surrounding ourselves with the pressure it starts to change us on the inside and God told me that there are two places that an egg can be <laughs> this is good some of y'all gonna get up and run right there in your living room it's good an egg can be in two places but really it's one place and the absent of the that of that place an egg can be under the feathers of its mother or it can be outside of it and outside of it is where things change it's cracked and broken and fried it's boiled and hardened. There's a lot of different things that happen to this egg outside of the safety of the mother. But when the egg is underneath that mother, it has the warmth, the protection, and it has what it needs to give life and to become life. And I don't know if you've got this or not, but that mother represents God and that egg represents you. And we have to stay with the Lord. We have to stay under His protection. We have to stay near to Him. If not, then we'll find ourselves outside of what is natural for us in the spiritual, what is natural for us with what God wants us to have, what's natural for us and for, for living a life as a Christian, and we'll find ourselves under boiling water and pressure we'll find ourselves being cracked and broken and God never wanted for that for us God wants us under him he wants us with him he wants us under his wings he wants us to stay close to him because that's where we will thrive and it's time that you that person that's watching a day that needs that breakthrough, it's time that you come back home. The good thing about Jesus is he brought redemption. So you don't have to stay in the broken place. You don't have to stay in the hardened place. You don't have to, although for an egg that may be a natural sentencing. But for us, it's not because Jesus has redeemed us and he can put us back into that state where we are redeemed and washed white as snow and he can place us back under the wings of the Lord and we will stay there in safety and we will be strong but it's time it's time that you break through that that hardened shell it's time that you break through all those things that have held you captive it's time that you break through everything that's been struggling you down and the and the, and the idols that you don't even realize that you created it's time that you wake up to those things and say no more in the name of Jesus I will tear down every high thing in the name of Jesus I will tear down every resemblance of what the world is trying to make me be in the name of Jesus and and through his his blood I'm coming home I'm coming home to the Lord where I belong and when you are with him you don't have to fear oh my goodness gracious when you are with the Lord you know you don't have to fear you don't have to fear let me speak to you when you're with the Lord you don't have to fear when you're with the Lord you don't have to be in bondage when you're with the Lord, you don't have to be depressed because He is, the Bible says time and time again, our refuge, our shelter, our hope. It gives tons and tons of descriptions all throughout the Bible. He's the mighty hand that holds us up. He is the one who sacrificed his life and paid it all. He was the punishment for our peace. The chastisement of our peace was on him. The word says that. He, by his stripes, we are healed. These are things that, 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 that Jesus made for us so we can come home. When you place anything before God, it pulls you out. And Psalm 16 and 4 says, Troubles multiply for those who chase after other gods. So, let me ask you this. I want you to do an inventory of your life today. And I want you to decide 
Have I been chasing other gods and not even knowing it? Have I been pursuing the things that are choking the word out and I didn't even know it? It's a funny thing about Joshua. Let's talk about Joshua. He could have went and taken Jericho. Because God had promised it. But God said first, you know, because Jericho would have been a nice fortified city. But instead, he told Joshua, tear down those walls. The walls had to come down. So whatever it is, whatever it is that you have placed in front of the Lord unknowingly, survey your heart today and make it right. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Speak the word over whatever it is. And be free. Be free. In Jesus' name. And come home. Come home to the shelter of the Almighty. Where life was destined to come out of you. You don't have to be a slave to anything anymore. Because Jesus made a way. I remember an old song, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. We don't have to be a slave to anything anymore. So will you, will you today survey your heart and say, Lord, show me the things that I've allowed to dominate me that's taken your place. And I pulled down that stronghold. I pulled down those walls in the name of Jesus. I love you guys. And I'll see you Wednesday night for a small, short little Bible study. We're going to do, do a little devotion. And then we'll be back Sunday. Let's pray. Lord, I ask God that you'll bless everyone that's been watching today. And I ask, Lord, that you will strengthen them, God, and reveal to them the things that they have allowed to place before you even myself, God. And let's pull down those things. Let's, let's break the power of the enemy that has held us captive. And let's stop elect allowing the world and everything around us and the devil to affect us so much, God. But let us come home to you and walk in your favor and your might and your strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me, let me say this before I go. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And maybe the weakness that you're feeling right now in this life is because you don't have joy in the Lord. I love you guys. Have an awesome day. Have an awesome Sunday. Get some rest. Don't do anything. Just relax. I love you.